Hi guys, and welcome back to Weird Catholic Things. Hannah and Kevin here joining you for another exciting episode today. Yeah, and today we want to dive into something that you'll recognize for sure, and that is candles. Yeah, you know, Kevin, I feel like the minute you walk into the sanctuary, you just like, there's candles everywhere. They're in all different corners of the sanctuary. Like, yeah. what's up with that? Like, what's our thing with candles? Yeah, we do, we do love candles as Catholics. They're all over the church, like you said. I think the first thing is to step back and see like what's the natural symbolism of, of candles and you know there's there's this fire this light that they give off and that has already the, a natural symbolism of the the triumph of light over darkness and dispelling that darkness dispelling the cold and bringing in this warmth and so when we embrace that in our worship as Catholics and we put them in the church we of course know that Christ is the true light. He's the mm -hmm. light who came into the world and he's the one who conquers darkness. And so we bring these candles into, into the church, into the sanctuary and all these crevices <laughs> and you know, everywhere because we want these reminders that again, this visual thing of, of the fact that Christ has overcome the darkness by his cross and his resurrection. Mm -hmm. Like that quote, like the light shines in the darkness and darkness shall not overcome it. That's right. Yeah, that's, that's, from that, that's from John. That's right. <laughs> Good work, quote the scripture. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you're right, candles all over the place. Let's go through maybe and talk about like the different kinds of candles that we see. Right, because it's not really like this one, like this, no. you know, we, we They're have- They're actually lit to start with. <laughs> so wh which one do you want to talk about? So there's this one candle that sits in front of the baptismal font, like right where we baptize babies. Yeah, right? that big, that huge, huge one. Huge, yeah. just taller than I am. Like what's the deal with that? I know, that? and when I'm like trying to, oh, right there, there you see, there you go. The Paschal candle. Oh. And it's so tall, you know, when it's up on its stand too, that when I got to try to light it and I got to like reach up there and it's hard to tell <laughs> when it's lit. You on your back. Yeah, <laughs> that's a yeah. good idea. I've never tried that one. We normally get somebody to pick it up and pull, pull it down for us. So this is the Paschal candle and it's, you actually see it. Have you have you ever been to an Easter vigil? I have. Yeah. I just went this past year. Actually. Okay, awesome. So if if you're not familiar with the Easter vigil, it happens on a Saturday night, mm -hmm. the Saturday night leading into Easter, and it's the first celebration of the resurrection. Mm -hmm. So if you've gone to the Holy Thursday liturgy and the Good Friday, you know, Stations of the Cross and the, and the the reverencing of of our Lord's death, then the night of Holy Saturday you have this Easter vigil, and this if you remember, you know. The, the church is dark when the Easter vigil starts and the Paschal candle is lit outside and is processed in and it's the mm -hmm. only light in the whole church because it's the symbol of Christ's triumph as he breaks through the, the, the chains of death and comes wow. out of the grave yeah. and into his new life, his resurrected life. So cool. And you know, do you remember anything else about that Easter vigil with uh, the Paschal candle? Yeah, so at this one that I'm thinking of in particular, like we all had, well, this happened actually at all the ones I've been to, but this one, we all had our candle and it wasn't lit when we first walked in, yeah. but we all got to carry a candle into the church that night too. And then you lit it off of the Paschal candle and it passed yeah. around, right? So Christ, the light of Christ comes to each of us and, and where, where we're at. And you know, you are holding this candle and hoping that the wax doesn't drip down and burn the your hands. The kid behind me was like picking off wax and yeah. throwing it around. Yeah, it's, it, it gets dangerous, but you know. <laughs> but we need these reminders of Christ's <laughs> triumph for us. So, so what other kinds of candles? So we have the Paschal candle. There's also, I feel like, like a ton of candles up on the altar. Like what's that yeah. about? Like yeah. the Father really need that extra light? There we like, go. Why are there so many candles up on the altar all right. the time? So, you know, we're in the age of electricity. We don't right. really need the candles What's for the, the light deal? there, right? But again, that symbol of, of the, the light overcoming darkness is particularly important there at the altar because it's that altar where the sacrifice of Christ on the cross is made present for us. And so, oh. you know, in that very sacrifice that, that did conquer darkness and death and sin, we have candles there to remind us that this is taking place here in a particular way for us. And you notice that sometimes that uh, depending on which parish you're at, maybe servers will come and pick up candles at the gospel procession. And yeah. you know, the deacon or the priest has the book of the gospels and there's the candles processing with it to say, you know, the word of the gospel is, is like light for us. It shines in the darkness of our own hearts and shows us where we need to where we need to change and convert and have that darkness cast out. Oh, okay, that makes yeah. sense. So we have the Paschal candle, we have the altar candles. Now, something I noticed last week when I was in there praying was there's a, like a candle right by the tabernacle. Yeah. Like, 
Jesus doesn't need light in the tabernacle. Like, why do we have that? <laughs> yes, What's very that good. One? Here we go. So you usually see it in like a red casing. It is. And it's and it's hanging from the from the ceiling and this beautiful gold thing here at, at St. Mary's. It's awesome. And uh, that that is a, a, a symbol of the Lord's presence there. It's actually the church requires that if you have these consecrated hosts, Jesus truly present in the Eucharist, reserved in the tabernacle, then you need to have a candle lit there to indicate his presence. Mm -hmm. And so as a little, like a you know. Secret signal kind of thing, yeah. like a Paul Revere. Like one there's one candle, he's here, there's none, he's not. Yeah, there you just, go. Just like Paul Revere. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> it's history knowledge. It's way, that's right. There you go. You got your scripture, you got your history, you're just showing off now. So yeah. So any other candles that you have questions about? Um, you know, well, what about like the candles? This is something I've always wondered. Like, why do we like candles in front of like statues or yeah. like by Mary? There's sometimes there's candles or yeah. Like, what's with that? Like, good question. So that that's it's kind a, of intense. Yeah, and there's a lot of them, and it's yeah. Uh, it's it's very beautiful actually. You can see the de the devotion of people, their their faith, and as they leave their prayers there before before our Lord or through the particular intercession of a saint or or Mary in particular. And the way that, you know, we, they light a candle that's going to burn for hours or even days, you know, if it's one of these bigger ones, is a, a, a visual reminder of their prayer being there at the church, rising up to God. You know, it's, it's steady, it's going to be there for, for days, and uh, oh, this, yeah. this reminder that, it's, that uh, the Lord is, is there listening to their prayer. Uh, so, not, okay, it reminds me of something I saw last weekend. So I was in Dallas. And it was at this shop, and they had all these candles that kind of looked like this, but then they had like Beyonce's face oh, or like gosh. Jonathan Van Ness's face. Yeah. Like that seemed a little off. It like, is a little off. That'll be in our next series on weird pagan okay. things. No. <laughs> is, no. Yeah, no, I don't recommend buying the, the Beyonce candles. Get like a Virgen de Guadalupe candle or something yeah. like that instead. Okay, this is yes, we we can talk about. We can talk about uh, pagan practices another time, but <laughs> the, the beauty of, of candles and in, in religious worship, you know, and how strange it is to put a uh, somebody, you know, a famous person on a candle that's normally used as a as a prayerful thing. Yeah, right. Yeah. And like, yeah. well, and too, like you were talking about the examples of the saints and like asking right. for their intercessions, like. I like Beyonce is still alive. I don't right. need her intercession right, right now <laughs> so no, much, but like looking at like the examples of the saints and how they can um, help us to grow in virtue. And That's faith. right. So, so you you have a lot of questions about candles. Are you one of these people that has like scented candles all over yeah. your all over your apartment? And, <laughs> I oh, love candles. See, here's an example of one right here. I love a good candle. I love. The oh, smells that come with it. I know, it's yeah. a false scent. Perfect false scent, for this yeah, high. very good. You know, but like, so why, like this one is, I, I believe it's like a maple flavor. And so my entire apartment smells like maple after when it's been burning. But like, I never noticed that in the church. Yeah. Like why yeah. can't we have scented paint? Like think how cool that would be, Kevin. Yeah. Walk into like a cinnamon bun, like smelling sanctuary. Can you imagine the sensory <laughs> overload from that? I mean, we've got we've already got incense and things like that to engage it'd our senses. It'd be a lot, right? But, but it'd be cool. Okay, sure, maybe, maybe we can think about it. But yeah, you're right. The the, the church's candles don't have these maple or cinnamon or whatever. You know, all these flavors to it. They do have a slight scent though, uh, because they're they're made of beeswax and. Oh. The, the church actually requests that the candles be made of at least 51% beeswax. 51%. 51%, just a little over half. It's more than majority. Right. <laughs> and it's because the beeswax is the highest quality uh, that, that a candle can be made out of. And so, you, just like we see the gold here, you know, yeah. and, and we use gold for sacred vessels, we want to always use our best and give our best to the Lord, give our first fruits to the Lord. And so, we, same thing with even even something like a lowly candle, you know? We're going to use the best materials we can have. And, and there's also this beautiful symbolism of the, the labor of the bees that goes into yeah. making that wax. Just like with the, the bread that is transformed into the Eucharist, that bread was a gift of nature, the wheat, right? But it was gathered That's up, so man's labor was yeah. put into it, and then it becomes something new, and it becomes something even better when the Lord comes down and, and, and dwells with us in the Eucharist. Amen. That's awesome. That's a great way to look at it. Okay, so maybe no maple flavored candles yeah. in the sanctuary then. They can stay at my apartment. That's fine. But if you want a fun <laughs> hobby, maybe you can become a beekeeper and you can make, you can get there like beeswax and make, uh, make church candles for Save us. The you know? Save the bees. Save the bees. <laughs> there you go. So thank you so much for joining us for another episode of our weird Catholic things, learning about all the different candles that we use, these things that are 
that are awesome that help to uh, enrich our experience of, of worshiping God and, uh, and, and make us unique as Catholics.